It has long been suspected that corneal biomechanical properties influence the results and outcomes of various ocular measurements and procedures. In addition, investigators have theorized that knowledge of corneal tissue properties may provide valuable information to aid in the diagnosis and management of ocular disease. The Reichert Ocular Response Analyzer utilizes a patented dynamic bidirectional applination process to present the world's only direct measure of corneal biomechanical properties and a more accurate assessment of intraocular pressure. The way I, I look at ORA is really primarily looking at corneal hysteresis. I really want to know what that corneal biomechanic makeup is. And there's some good support now in the literature that shows that if you have a lower corneal hysteresis, that patient is likely to progress quicker over time than if uh, a patient had a higher corneal hysteresis. And when I speak on the subject of corneal thickness, I always caution now that the corneal thickness is very important to know, but I think you need to go further and look more at the corneal biomechanics. So, so in my practice, I don't use just the corneal hysteresis. I, I put the whole picture together with my patients, just one part of the equation. But I have a patient who has a lower corneal hysteresis. I'm gonna follow the patient a little more closely and in fact may operate a little sooner than I would otherwise, knowing that the patient is likely to progress uh, over time uh, much more quickly than we, we think. Uh, but based on what the literature shows, based on what my, private, my practice is, is showing with my patients, it's been really an invaluable part of the workup of my glaucoma patients. By now, nearly everyone recognizes that the current gold standard for measuring pressure, the Goldman tonometer, has considerable flaws. The Goldman is significantly affected by corneal properties because the device was designed to provide accurate measurements in eyes with average corneas. But we now know that many corneas vary more significantly from average than previously thought and in more complex ways than simply thickness alone. Uh, I believe that uh, correcting, uh, cor correcting IOP measures by a fixed uh, algorithm is probably wrong. Uh, almost certainly wrong in the majority of our patients and probably uh, is trying to instill into a relatively flawed measurement, gold montanometry, a degree of precision uh, that is not uh, there. Because the ocular response analyzer is capable of measuring the biomechanical properties of the cornea, it is able to provide a pressure measurement that agrees with Goldman measured IOP on the average, but is uninfluenced by corneal effects. This new measurement of IOP, called IOPCC, has essentially zero correlation with central corneal thickness and stays relatively constant post-LASIK. I've seen in my normal tension glaucoma practice that a number of patients who have a measured Goldman pressure being lower than the true IOPCC. And I take that information and, and, and try to get that patient's pressure a little lower than, than I thought I needed to prior. So IOPCC is very well validated and gives me, again, another measure in, in addition to corneal hysteresis that I think is important in, uh, in my practice. I have a uh, very much a tertiary type of glaucoma practice where I see patients uh, either with advanced disease or uh, frequently patients who are coming for a second opinion as to whether or not they really have glaucoma and whether treatment uh, is necessary or if treatment uh, is adequate. And uh, one of the keys to that uh, decision making in that regard is understanding uh, tonometry for that patient and deciding whether or not uh, the patient is being over or under treated. The Riker device provides us with some very useful information uh, along those lines and the patients have been very accepting of the device and in fact quite excited about the idea of using new technology uh, to better define what their true pressure is and whether the previous measurements uh, made over the years have in fact uh, been erroneous. And I find that uh, about half the time I'm telling people that they probably don't need to be as aggressively treated, but just as frequently I'm finding patients in whom we've probably been under-treating and need to become much more aggressive. And so I believe this technology is really going to allow us to refine uh, who we need to be worried about, 
uh, for, uh, for treatment purposes in the management of glaucoma.